Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. Today we're going to have a case study of an ICO. So we already talked about what an ICO is and how it works and how it's different to an IPO. And now we're going to look into a specific example of an ICO, a hypothetical example that will help us understand a bit better how exactly uh, ICOs take place. So let's dive straight into it. So let's say we've got Mary here. Um, oh, by the way, this example I took from an, uh, a blog post I found on Medium. I'll link to it at the end of this tutorial uh, if you'd like to read it there in more detail. So let's say we've got Mary here who decides to come up with a theme park, to create a theme park. And it's a really uh, innovative theme park. She, or basically she sees some demand in the market. She knows that um, she can do things a bit differently and make it valuable to the community. And then uh, once uh, she's bought the land and everything, she will invite um, businesses to create their own rides there and, um, you know, to crew, to help her populate the theme park with rides. So she's got a whole case study about this and she's written a white paper and we'll talk about white papers, uh, in a separate tutorial. And, uh, basically she is ready to get things going and, but she needs funds. She needs to raise some capital in order to buy the land, in order to organize everything, get all the permits and licenses and, and uh, get things underway. So what she decides to do is to do an ICO. And how is she going to do that? Well, she's going to put this whole idea into a box, encapsulate this idea and say that inside this um, theme park, we're going to use special tokens. They're, let's call them the S tokens. And these S tokens... Uh, are going to be what people are going to pay for for the rides. Uh, and that's what these businesses are going to receive in payment. Um, and so Mary decides to issue 1 million S tokens. And there will never ever be more than that tokens. There's always going to be just 1 million tokens. And she decides to issue them. And then she uh, splits them in half. So 500,000 S tokens and 500,000 S tokens. And one of those um, batches will be used for an ICO. So in the ICO, she'll actually offer to the public only 500,000 S tokens. And the other 500,000 she'll keep for herself, uh, which so that money later on will be used for you know upgrades in the business or to fund more projects within that business, or um, she'll just keep it as, as the founder, as um, you know, like she, sometimes founders keep that, uh, those coin, those tokens. And so there's an ICO announcement and some people are interested in this ICO. It might be because they're interested in the project. They want to contribute and get some tokens in exchange. Uh, what they'll do with those tokens, we'll find out in a second. So, but basically the, the way it goes is they pay cash for the tokens. Uh, and they receive the token in the case. So basically here they get some tokens and they pay, uh, for instance, the price is determined. Uh, Mary sets the price at $2 per token. The initial coin offering is at $2 per token. You can buy one token, one S token for $2. So that allows Mary to raise, if she sells all 500,000, that allows Mary to raise $1 million, which she will then use those dollars to buy the land to start setting up the theme park. And so what will uh, these people do with these tokens? Well, there's two things they can do. They can wait until the theme park is live and then they can spend their tokens in the theme park on the rides later on. So they're kind of like pre-purchasing the tokens. It's kind of, it's, an ICO is a way of crowdfunding a project. So instead of waiting until the theme park is built and then buying the tokens, because they believe in it so much, they're buying the tokens now to later spend in uh, to help Mary get started and then they will spend the tokens later on. So they just, for them, it's just a timing difference. Or some of these people are buying the tokens not to spend in the theme park. And this is what we're seeing quite a lot these days in the world of initial coin offerings, in the world of cryptocurrencies. People don't actually buy the tokens to spend them later on within the enclosed economy. And like we can see here in the box, this is, this is what Mary has created, like an encapsulated economy. Instead of spending, instead of buying the tokens to spend them later in that encapsulated economy, people often buy these token tokens in or in speculative in a speculative manner. So they expect them to appreciate in price and to sell them off later on um, for a higher price. And so 
if the idea is successful, later on what will happen is more people will need tokens. More people will want to go to the theme park uh, or invest in these tokens. And so they will need to buy them off the people that have already bought them. And again, they will get tokens, but in exchange they will have to pay cash. And because there's more people interested in tokens and there's never ever going to be more than 1 million S tokens ever, the, de the supply is limited but the demand is growing. And so when the, that happens, the price increases. And so because the price is increased, now these people are going to have to pay, for example, $6 per token. And they're going to buy them off these uh, first people that initially got into the market. And what are they going to do with them? Well, they're going to also um, either keep them for investment purposes, for speculative reasons, and later on sell them off one day, or they're actually interested in going to the theme park and they're going to go and spend those tokens at the theme park and uh, purchase rides and, um, you know, maybe products that they're selling in the theme park, but mostly rides, you ju jump on different rides and pay with the, for the rides with tokens. Um, and so that's, that's how this whole system works. The question only the, that we still have left is what do these businesses do with those tokens, right? So they've gotten all these, tokens now what what can they do with them because they uh, they might need to pay their employees they might want to pay some profits out they they might not want to just operate in tokens they want to convert them back to dollars so a way to convert them back to dollars would be for example to sell them back to the public so the public doesn't only have to buy the tokens from the people that initially invested into the ICO they can also buy them from the business and again, here they get tokens in exchange. They pay cash at the current market price, which might be six dollars per token. And so, um, if they want to in, either invest into tokens or use them actually in the park, so th the idea is that tokens are actually designed to be used. And so, if they want to use them in the to in the park, they need to go and buy them, either buy them off these people or from the businesses. There might be like a little exchange that Mary might set up here somewhere. And so, they takes away, you know, takes the helps the businesses spread out these tokens across people who are interested in them and again they, they go in go back into the park and spend them and so that's uh how this whole thing works uh, an important thing to note here is as you can see there is no mining involved there's no mining of tokens like when we hear the word mining that is associated with coins that are in the second layer because that they're used as a reward for miners. There will still be mining to support the blockchain, to support the Ethereum blockchain and to keep the thing growing, but that's kind of managed separately. It's not related to the ICO. So when you hear somebody talking about an ICO and then you hear them talking about mining of those tokens, if, if it's an ICO on the third layer and uh, of, of our chart, and then they're talking about mining those tokens, they probably don't know what they're talking about. So you got to be careful around those those situations and um yeah and like so i've i've seen one of those in in the media it was it was very interesting but so just be careful there's no mining involved it's just a way to raise capital for a project to crowdfund a project um and the key takeaways are here here first of all it's a no mining involved it's a way to raise uh, crowdfund a project to raise capital for a project um the design the idea behind tokens is actually that they're used for something inside the economy here and finally at the moment a lot of people are actually buying tokens for speculative reasons they're not even intending on using them inside that economy they're intending on selling them off later on so that's dangerous that's how bubbles are created that's how um you know an ico or crypto bubble can be created and um, that's that's generally something to be aware of so um an important point is to always understand what is the underlying purpose of these tokens and we'll talk about that in the next tutorial in a bit more detail um, but for now, this is uh, how uh, tokens um, works or how ICOs work. Uh, if you'd like to f read this example in its original version, you can find it here. What the heck is an ICO by Praveen Krishnan uh, on Hacker Noon or on Medium. Um, and uh, it's quite a good article, highly recommend it. And if you want a more in-depth an example of an ICO that is has is more involved and has more moving parts and like concepts to grasp uh, another example that i highly recommend is called how crypto tokens will enable the disruption of businesses like uber and airbnb by andrew finn and andrew finn by the way is one of the co-creators of the blog called wait but why 
which is run by Tim Urban. So he and so Andrew Finn has his own uh, little uh, website where you can find some articles, and it's called finscave.com. And this is a quite a recent article where he analyzes, uh, like in detail, a very involved case study of how a company like a ride sharing company could use blockchain to completely disrupt Uber and Lyft uh, through using blockchain. So very, very interesting read, quite a long article, but well worth it. So if you want to um, like enhance your disruptive thinking in the space of blockchain, definitely highly recommend checking this one out. Once again, all of these links will be in um, the course notes um, at Super Data Science. On that note, thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy blockchains.